Ladies and gentlemen, the launch of a new generation of graphics cards is always extremely exciting in the PC industry. Perhaps even the most exciting set of components to launch, maybe even more so than CPUs. What will the flagship products bring us? New features, high levels of performance for our games and higher resolution. But of course, all of this is with the caveat. Will you be willing to cough up the cash for these flagship products? Enter cards like the RTX 3060 Ti here. This product, at least in my opinion, is the most exciting card in NVIDIA's Ampere lineup, and maybe even the best product since NVIDIA's Pascal range of graphics cards. Now that may sound a very lofty claim, but as a spoiler alert, this card nips at the heels of the RTX 3070, the previous cheapest card in the Ampere lineup, and frequently isn't that far behind a card such as the RTX 2080 Ti, and actually beats the RTX 2080 Super regularly. So, with that all said, let's start out by looking at the aesthetics and the uh, specifications of the card, and then we will delve into the performance. As a quick note, this is also a uh, article, so if you prefer the written word, or you want to check out the slides in your own time, you can of course find the article linked in the video description or the pinned comment. And as the last little note, this card was sent to us by NVIDIA for the purposes of review. This is not, however, a sponsored video. All opinions are our own. Um, but with all of that said, let's get into it. The card is basically the exact same design as the GeForce RTX 3070, albeit the shroud's grey is lightened up a little, and actually, speaking of lighting up, that's the worst part of this design. The GeForce logo doesn't light up, the same as the RTX 3070. It's a real shame, in my opinion. It's hardly something massive, it doesn't break the performance of the card, but come on, NVIDIA, it would look damn cool. A basic white or green set of LEDs for future cards would be awesome as a minimum, if not fully customizable RGB. I do understand this is to keep the costs down, but it is a shame. Because the card's design is almost identical to that of the RTX 3070, we see the same fan design too, and this is what Nvidia calls a flow-through design. On the right side fan, it pushes air through the card's fin stack and then up to the case itself over RAM and other components to then be expelled by your case's fans. Meanwhile, the leftmost fan pulls air into the GPU, does its cooly thing, and then expels it out of the rear of the system just below the I.O. ports. Speaking of the I.O. ports, three DisplayPort 1.4s and a single HDMI 2.1. You can enjoy variable refresh rate goodness on a correctly equipped TV if you so wish. As expected, there's also the new Fangle Founders Edition power connector. These support up to 12 pins, but the RTX 3070 as well as uh, 3060 Ti only support 6 of these 12 because of the TDP being much lower. Therefore, we have a single 8-pin PSU converter which is supplied. So, unlike the RTX 3080 which uses a Y splitter for two of the 8-pin PCIe connectors, we only need a single 8-pin PCIe connector here. This is more than enough to feed the 200 watt TDP of the card. Spec-wise, the similarities to the RTX 3070 doesn't end there, with the memory of the two GeForce cards being identical. 8 gigabytes of 256-bit GDDR6 running at 14 Gbps, giving 448 gigabytes per second bandwidth, with the major difference lying in the number of SM. We're seeing 1024 CUDA cores shaved off the total available compared to the RTX 3070. This brings the total number of SM for the 3060 Ti down to just 38 from 46. Proportionally, this has a direct impact on the number of Tensor and RT cores as well. We also see 60 MHz snipped off of the boost frequency, though frankly, using default fan profiles and no overclocking, to say these figures are conservative isn't even doing them justice. We would regularly see high 1900 MHz for our boost figure, and I would often see it hit almost 2 GHz. 
and it usually hovers in our testing anyway between 180 to 200 watt mark at, at stock although this does depend whether you're using RT or tensor cores for those who want more power well you can of course overclock we snuck an extra 110 megahertz onto our core a ludicrous 1200 megahertz on our RAM which is identical basically to what we got for the RTX 3070 for your FYI and we achieved this with default fan profiles and cranking the power limit to max. I'm sure for those who really put their mind to it, read custom BIOSes and shunts and that type of thing, you can definitely get more out of the card. Right, well, we've talked about the specs, we've talked how the card looks, let's look at the performance. For those wondering, I am not featuring RX 6000 series uh, cards in this review in terms of performance because, quite honestly, I haven't been able to get a review sample yet. I've reached out to AMD and they're doing their best to provide me one, and I've also tried to buy one as well, but AIBs and retailers have not had any in stock that they can provide me, and until AMD gives me one, I don't want to just grab figures from someone else's uh, you know, testing. That's extremely unfair, and obviously testing variants like different uh, computer configurations and that type of thing. Plus, also, the RTX 3060 Ti is much cheaper than, uh, you know, uh, AMD's offerings anyway. So hopefully by the time the 6700 uh, series cards launches in January, at least according to the rumors, we will uh, be able to include RDNA 2 in the tests. With that said, I'm also testing on an Intel 10900K, uh, which is the exact same configuration that I've used for all of the other cards in these uh, tests. And uh, yeah, with that said, let's start. The RTX 3060 Ti is going to have an MSRP for the Founders Edition card of 399.99 US dollars, and frequently is about 10% slower than the RTX 3070, and in worst case scenarios it's about 15% slower. This is also dependent on whether we're dealing with heavy ray tracing in games and DLSS, but overall about 10% slower than the RTX 3070. This leaves you with the obvious question. 
should you pick up an RTX 3060 Ti or should you instead just go for the RTX 3070 and cough up the extra money? Well, this as always is down to you as the end user. Personally, I would rather save the money. I would rather keep the money in my back pocket and have an RTX 3060 Ti in my machine. But as always, everyone's usage scenario is different. I will say that Nvidia have told me that availability for the 3060 Ti should be pretty good, but, well, I'm recording this prior to their release, so we'll quickly find out whether that's right or not, won't we? The only bitter pill to swallow for the RTX 3060 Ti is that it's still rather expensive for what we would traditionally expect a 60-class GPU. And I do realize that that's still a rather large point of contention for people. Graphics cards, there's no denying, have become more expensive as the years have gone on. So I think that while my opinion that this card is still very impressive, considering the price point of it being 100 US dollars cheaper than the RTX 3070, I do understand people still thinking, well, damn, it's a 60 series card which costs 400 US dollars. Considering you can pick up a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series X for uh, 500 US dollars, and they, of course, come with the SSD, the CPU, well, it's a complete console. I do understand people's frustration, but this card is still more capable than, well, any of the next generation consoles, to be really, truly honest with you. We will have to wait to see how AMD can compete with RDNA 2. It's difficult to imagine that the 6700 and 6700 XT are going to be slow. And given the leaked specifications of the card, we can imagine that they're going to do extremely well. But of course, they're not available yet, so at least for the holiday period, it seems that NVIDIA are uncontested in this space, at least if you want a next generation card. There's tons of arguments if you can get like a bargain RX 5700 or something along those lines, but obviously that's down to you and your budget. So this does bring us, that was actually many circles, but it brings us at least one full circle to where I started this review. I do think that this is the most impressive Ampere card that NVIDIA have launched to date. And I really look forward to seeing what even cheaper cards, such as the RTX 3060, will bring to the table. Assuming that there's fairly modest cuts for the 3060 and NVIDIA are even more aggressive with pricing. As Let's just be really honest with ourselves. Let's just cut all the bull and be really honest. This card... And the prices we're seeing with Ampere are directly because of what AMD are doing with RDNA 2. This is why I keep saying competition equal good, no matter what the product, whether it's consoles, CPUs, GPUs, SSDs, I don't care. I want competition. NVIDIA clearly are clawing and do not want any uh, sales to go to AMD unless they can damn well help it. And naturally, you will get fans on either side that will buy a product no matter what. But most people, I hope anyway, will be those people who are like, hmm, this card here is slightly cheaper, but it's got slightly worse frames. Or this card here, I, you know what, it's slightly lower TDP and lower noise and yeah, this, and they make... In other words, they're making conscious buying decisions and they're making those decisions based upon what they want out of a product. And all of this, the price of this card and any other cards from uh, NVIDIA are directly because of what AMD have brought to the table and I like that. Hopefully, AMD will be ultra aggressive with the RX 6000 series and continue to be with the 6700. We'll have to see about availability for the 6000 range. But... In closing, I think this is the best RTX Ampere card yet. The RTX 30 lineup has already been pretty impressive, at least in my opinion, less so with availability, but it is starting to be resolved. I think for those who want a card which is going to offer high frame rates at 1440p and 
Um, they also, of course, want hardware-based ray tracing and all of the bells and whistles. I suspect this card is going to be really great for something like uh, Cyberpunk. As always, we will do much more testing when Cyberpunk and these other games come out. And so definitely, of course, stick with us then because we'll be doing like PC builds and much more, which will be really fun. Um, but with all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do. You click on the bell icon and subscribe, of course, to the channel. Um, just a quick reminder, there's an article version of this as well, which is linked in the video description. But thank you very much for watching. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.